Today we're going to be looking at the 2016 U.S. Open Gold question, Closing the Farm. So in this question, Farmer John and his cows are going to leave town, so what he's going to do is he's going to basically go and close down his farm. And what's going to happen is, the farm is going to have n barns with m bidirectional paths. So Farmer John wants to close one barn at a time, and when a barn closes, all of the other paths that are adjacent to that barn close. So what Farmer John wants to know is when he's closing his barns one at a time, is it still fully connected? So do all of the other remaining barns, are all of those connected? So we're going to remove the barns one at a time, and then we're going to output yes or no to whether or not they're fully connected. So in doing the gold part of this question, what we can notice is we can't actually just simulate literally removing every node one by one. And the reason is, if I were to do that, I would have to do n DFSs, which would obviously go over the time limit. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to use union find. And what we're going to do is we're going to use offline queries. So even though the question is asking for building a graph and then removing nodes one by one, what we're going to do instead is we're going to actually build a graph up. So if we want to get this graph, what we're actually going to do is we're going to take the order of the nodes that are being removed, and then we're going to go backwards. So let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if they're being removed in this order, what we're actually going to do is we're going to build it up from the opposite direction. So if this is the last one being removed, it means we can start building with this one. And then we're going to add 4 and then three, and then two, and then one, and so on. So what this is actually gonna do is since I'm building the graph, and while I'm building the graph, I can already simply check to see whether or not it's fully connected, it's gonna save on all of those DFSs. So what I can actually do instead is I'm going to say, okay, I'm gonna start with five. I'm going to check to see if it's fully connected. It is in fact fully connected. And in order to optimize this further, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to keep a count of the number of current quote-unquote parts I have. So in this case, I have one part. And then I'm going to add this next one. So I'm going to add four. So when I add four, I'm going to add one to my count. And then I see that these two aren't connected, so I'm going to leave that. I'm going to add three. And then when I add three, I'm going to see that these are actually connected. So since I added one, but then combined these through, I union merged them through, I now have one. Then I'm going to add two. I currently have two. I'm going to add one, combine these. So this was three, but then I combined them. So now it's one. And then in doing this, every time we add a node, we just look at our number here and we put it in a list. So I'll look at the number. And then I'll keep track of a list, and at the end I'll just print this list out in the opposite order. So in doing this, what we do is not only do we save on a DFS, but we're basically able to use union find, use offline query, and basically build one graph in order to save time on this question. So let's look at the code for this question. So I've set up the program a bit here. The first thing we've done is we have the input read in, and then I've created the data structures needed. So since we're going to be using a union find, I'm going to have a function here called make, which is going to be pretty standard. What I'm going to do is for this union find and for this graph question, I'm going to be using an adjacency list. So it's going to be a vector of arrays. And then I'm going to use a parent array. So over here, I'm just going to set the parent array values i to i, so set it as itself. And then when I read in the m edges, I'm just going to push back the edges in my adjacency list. I'm going to create something called queries. And what this basically is, is it's going to be the farms that we are currently going to close, or actually going to be the farms that we are adding to our union find. So since we want to add our farms in the opposite order that we would, like if we were simulating that we would remove them, I'm just going to put it in the position n minus i minus 1. So I'm going to start my union find. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a variable called components. And what this variable is, is it's basically going to be the number of different sections we had. So in the example earlier, we had the tiny tick marks at the bottom. 
and it basically just represents the number of total components that I currently have in my graph. And this is just to save on like DFS time. So if the number of components is one, that means the entire graph is fully connected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to loop through my queries and then my current node is just going to be queries I. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to add the new edges. So I'm going to have something called activated. And what activated is, is it's basically going to tell me whether or not this node is currently inside my graph. So what I'm gonna do is the way activated is gonna work is since I already have my M edges, I'm going to loop through all of the edges in the adjacency list of my node. But the problem is since some of the farms are not yet inside of my graph, what activated is gonna do is it's basically gonna tell me whether or not J or the node that is connected to node, if this node is activated and my current node is activated, that means both nodes or both farms are currently in my graph and I can add this edge. So in this way, I'm just gonna add all of the edges in my graph currently. And then what I'm gonna do is because I don't want to over count, I don't want to delete more than I need, the number of components that I have, I'm just going to check to see whether or not the roots of node and j are in the same group. And what this basically means is I'm going to check if node and j are in the same group. So let's look at the find root and join functions. So this is pretty standard to a union find algorithm, but what it's basically going to be is I'm going to have find root. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a quick recursion function and I'm just going to keep running it until parent A is equal to A. So we set it up here, and I'm just going to basically keep going up my tree until I find the root. And then I'm gonna have my join function here, and what it's actually gonna do is it's gonna find the root of both A and B, and it's basically going to point the root of B to A, and that way I connect the two trees. So if, the two have this, if A and B have the same root, that means they're in the same group. So over here, all I have to do is check to see if they're in the same group. If they're not in the same group, I'm just going to join them. And I'm going to subtract one from components because it means I'm combining two groups. So that's basically the main part of the algorithm. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in my answer vector. And since I'm going to be printing it out in opposite order, I'm going to do n minus i minus 1. And I'm just going to check whether or not components is equal to 1. So if components is equal to 1, it means it's a fully connected graph, otherwise it is not. At the very end, I'm just going to loop through and I'm going to print out all of the yes or no's. And that's the end of our program.